Hello and welcome. Today we're working on a 401k growth table to show what happens to your investments over time if you start investing even just a little amount in a retirement plan like a 401k. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial literacy, including Excel. So here is our table on our 401k plan. So we have some basic assumptions and let's assume we start at age 20 and then it grows to age 60, uh, sorry, 75, and we would have uh, an amount of money at the end. So let me show you how to do this step by step. So let's get rid of all this. Get rid of that. And then we have, this is our given information. Now, it may be unrealistic to start at 20, but I'm gonna start at age 20 and go to 75 and then we'll have we'll show it how we can adjust for 27 to 65 or whatever we can adjust uh, by year so we're going to adjust the table to fit the number of years and we'll do that at the very end let's say our annual salary is 40,000 now you can put in whatever uh, salary you want to and it'll grow let's say it grows at 3% you can change the numbers this is just given information let's assume that the 401k plan has a annual match of 5% and that your um, employee is going to save, let's say 5%. The investment will return 8% for each year for all those years and the age of retirement is 75. So the first thing we want to do is let's assume the employer will match the first 5% and the employee will save at least 5%. So how much goes into the employer match? Well, we need to run a little if statement. So if they put in zero, one, two, three, four, five, they'll match that. Anything more than five, they will stop at 5%. So we need to do a little if statement. So the if statement would be, if this 5% is less than or equal to 0.05, then what do we do? We just put that number, we just match that number. If it's not, we're going to put 0.05%. Uh, 0.05%. So let's test it. What if we put in 0%? Well, it's going to match 0. 1%, it'll match 1%. 4%, it'll match 4. And then 5%, it'll match 5. 6% or more, 5%, uh, 6% or more will match only 5%. So we'll stop at 5%. So that means we'll have the employee's 5% plus the employer's 5%. One of the things that's such a big advantage is there might be an employer match. So here, the employee decides, or you decide 5%, the employer matches 5%, and then the total that goes in is 10% of your income. So it's a way to get an, an increase of 5% in your annual salary. Now it goes into the account. You don't get to spend it, but it goes into your account. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to build this without the um, adjustment, without the if statements that we need, show how it works and show why we can, how we can adjust uh, and we'll get started there. So first thing we want to do is start with the beginning age, 20. So to do the 21, we're going to do an if statement. So we'll start with if, if the 20 is less than 75, then what we're going to do is take the 20 and add one to it. We'll just have an increment of one, add one year. If it's not, then we'll just leave it blank. So I need to do double quote, space, double quote. It'll just leave it blank. Now, let's go back and look at this. We want to copy it down. So we'll say if the preceding number is less than, we always want to point to the 75 or whatever that cell, whatever number is in that cell. So we're going to make it an absolute, put dollar sign C, dollar sign 8. Then we're going to take that preceding number and add 1. So that's going to work. So let's copy this down. We need to copy it down a ways till we get to, there's age 69. It should stop at age 75. It stops at age 75. Now watch, there is a formula here, but it stops at age 75. Now it's gonna be dynamic. And so if we stop at 55, we'll see 
at 55, it stops and there's no other cell going on here. So let's go back to our 75. Let's build this for the maximum range of 20 to 75. Now the annual salary starts at 40,000 and then it's going to grow at 3% each year. So we'll take the 40,000 uh, times 1 plus that 3% growth rate. We're going to assume a constant growth rate here. In this case, it's 3%. So 41,200. If you got a 3% return, you're making 40,000. Your next year salary is 41,200. We can copy that all the way down and you'll see at the very end, it's going to go past age 75. Well, we don't want that to happen, so we'll have to adjust here in a little bit. But we've got uh, about all the way to age 79, which was is past our table. We don't want to have this. All right, let's keep going. Our annual investment, if you started, and we're going to assume you started at the beginning of the year and you made annual investments, so 40,000 times the 10% make it an absolute address. So you'll put 4,000 in. We're going to make an assumption that you make this at the end of the year. There's no return that can happen. So the balance is going to be the 4,000 plus the zero. The balance is going to be 4,000. So at the end of the first year, you put in 5%. Your employer matched it 5%. Now you have 4,000 in there. And you got no investment return. Okay. Now, on age 21, you're going to put in your 41,200 times the 10%, make it absolute. So you put in 4,120. And let's just say the return is from the previous balance. So we'll take the previous balance, 4,000 times the 8%. We're going to copy that. So we're going to put a... Um, absolute here dollar sign C dollar sign seven so you make a three hundred and twenty dollar return and so your balance now is four thousand plus four thousand one twenty plus the three twenty so now you have eight thousand four forty I think we should be able to copy this down so let's copy this down what happens to the annual investment so if you get at age 75 203,000, you're putting in 20,328. Now we have some extra years. We'll solve that in a little bit. The return, let's just say the return, copy that down. We can take this number times 8%. Let's check our work. The preceding balance times 8% is our return. But our balance then, we can copy that down. And so we've solved the problem. Let's look at the very bottom. At age 75, you would have 5,500,000 in there. We have a few extra years. We're not going to um, want those, so let's, let's figure out a way we can use an if statement to get rid of those. Now, the age is dynamic. If we did retirement at 55, it's going to stop the table, but the table continues unless we put some if statements in. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to our second year, make it 75 again, our second year, is 41,200. So we're going to just add a little if statement that says if, and we'll point to the 21. If the 21 equals blank, and the way we specify blank is double quote, space, double quote, then what do we do? We're just going to leave that cell blank. So comma, double quote, space, double quote, and we'll put a comma here if it's not blank, we're going to put everything that we just calculated, we'll, we'll let it run the math. And so at the very end, we're going to close our parentheses. So then we can just copy that down. 41,200, we'll copy it down. It doesn't change the numbers, but if you get to the bottom, it leaves things blank. And now we have error messages because we don't have anything to multiply by. We don't have any salary, so we need to change the second row here. So the 4,120 is just 10% times the 41,200. So we need to wrap it in an if statement. If, if the years equals a blank space, 
then what do we do? We're just going to leave a blank space. If not, then we're going to run that math and we'll close the parentheses on the if statement. So it doesn't change the number, but it takes care of the error. When we go down, it gets rid of the error, the value error that we'd have past age 75. We've got two more columns to do and then we can check our work. So the 320, we're going to only do it if it's not blank. So we'll start with an if statement. Start with parentheses. If age 21 equals a blank space, then we'll just leave a blank space. Double quote, space, double quote. If not, then we're going to run the math. Close our parentheses on the if statement. And so the 320, we can copy this all the way down. Let's check our work. So now we don't have, yes, we have formulas, but it doesn't have any error messages past age 75. One more, and we'll be finished with this um, 401k table. So we only want to run the math if the age is blank. So we'll do another if statement. If, if the age equals a blank space, we need to put double quotes in space. Then we're going to leave a blank space, double quotes in space, comma, the value if it's false is going to be that math. So if it has a number, then it runs the math. So the math is still the same. We'll, we'll um, copy it all the way down. So what we have is all the years. So if you did this from age 20 to age 75, you got an 8% return and a 3% raise. That's 5.5 million. Now, that may be a little extreme. So we say, hey, let's start at 25 and let's stop at age 70. So you've got 45 years of growth. Now watch what this table does. The table stops at age 75. Yes, there's formulas down below, but it stops the calculation. So it's $2.4 million. Let's say you got a 9% return. A 9% return. It's $3.2 million. Let's go back and do a couple little quick questions here. Let's go back to our 8% return. I recommend that you start in your 20s. If you have a chance to start in your 20s, start in your 20s. Let's think about the cost of waiting. So the total, the total that you would have at age 70 is 2.4 million. If you start at age 25, 2.4 million. What if you wait five years and start at age 30? How much do you have at that point? Well, instead of 2.4 million, you've got 1.6 million. You lost $800,000 by just waiting five years. Now, you can say, well, but at age um, 30, I might have be making 46,000 rather than 40,000. So it goes from 2.4 million to 1.85 million. So the cost of waiting is very expensive. So start early and just a little amount, you saved 5%. You know how much that 5% was? It cost you $2,000 for the year or about $183 per month. So it's very, very doable. Now we're gonna do a couple more little bonus problems for time value of money. So let's do some calculations here. The first one is, what is the number of periods to pay off a credit card? And let's just assume you have a credit card that has a $2,000 balance. The credit card interest rate is 18% and the minimum monthly payment is $40. Now, we're just gonna make this the monthly payment. That's the minimum that you'd have to do to be in good standing with your credit card company. So let's do, here is the number of periods. So I'm gonna search for NPER, number of periods. Now we know this is a monthly because it's a credit card. So the rate is going to be 18%. Now that's not per month. That is annual rate divided by 12. So that's an annual rate compounded monthly. The payment is going to be $40. Now I'm going to make that a negative and then 40 because my present value is 2000. The future value is going to be zero. What does it take to pay it off? and the payments happen at the end of the period. So it's going to take 93 months to pay this off. 
Well, let's convert it to years. 93 divided by 12 is 7.7 7 years. So 7 and 2 thirds years, that's expensive. That's a long time to pay off a credit card. Well, what's our total principal and interest? Well, $40 payments times 93 payments is $3,724. This is an expensive way to finance something. Let me show you how to convert this to a, a simple sentence. You might want to say, well, hey, let's convert it to a sentence so somebody can understand what's going on. So you can start a formula and we do a text, so double quotes, and you might say, it takes, and let's just put X for the years, years to pay off the credit card. And I need to end with the double quotes. I missed that. So um, here I typed it in and I need to end double quotes because that is just a text. It just puts that on the screen. But I can replace that X with actually a formula. I can put 7.76 years. So, so what I need to do is replace the X with a double quote. So I've got a text string that says it takes space and then I need to put in an ampersand because the plus sign for text is an ampersand and I'm going to point to 7.76 years and then I need to do another ampersand and then a double quote space years. Okay, so let's see how this works. So it works fine except it gives the full 15 digits of the years which we don't want to see, right? So you go back and you edit the D8, put in a round function. So round D8 to, let's just do one digit, close parentheses. And so what you have is it takes 7.8 years to pay off the credit card. You need to know that. So if you're, if this is you, you need to know this, or if this is a friend or, or you're counseling somebody, say, hey, is there any way you could make a $50 payment? Make a $50 payment, and it drops your years from 7.76 down to 5. Could you make a $100 payment? Then it drops your years down to 2, So, and it really saves you a lot of money. That means you only pay an extra $400 of interest rather than like $1,700 of interest. So you definitely can do that and figure out what does it take to pay off a credit card. All right, the next one. Let's say we have a beginning balance, and let's just start with $1,000, and we put in $250. You say, look, I know I need to get started in investing, and I'm going to have $1,000 right now, and we'll put in $250, and my ending balance is $50,000 over 10 years. Well, what kind of rate of return did I get? So you're trying to figure out, well, you know, what's my rate of return? I don't know. I can't fig figure this out. I can't look it up or whatever. You can calculate this. If you put in a thousand and two hundred fifty dollars each month, and then um, it grows to fifty thousand over ten years, what's your rate of return? Well, you know it's going to be ten times twelve, so it's one hundred and twenty months. And the rate of return is going to be called um, the function is called the rate function. So the rate we need the number of periods is one twenty. The payment is going to be uh, two fifty. The present value is going to be a thousand. Now, here's the challenge: present value and future value have to be different signs. So I'm going to make. If I put in fifty thousand, then I'm going to have a number error. So one way you can do this, I think the probably the best way to do this is make my my initial payment, my payments along the way negative because I'm paying out of pocket. My present value paid out of pocket. So they need to be the same sign, negative payment, negative present value, and it makes a positive future value. I'm going to return, I'm going to receive the 50000 The payments happen at the end of the period. So we got a big return of 0.73, but that is a monthly return, so we need to convert that to an annual rate. So we multiply that times 12. So it is an annual return of... 8.72% and that is compounded monthly because you put in monthly payments. So if over 10 years you put in, start with a thousand, put in $250 a month and it grows to 50,000, you got an 8.72% return.
Now, there's nothing magic about my numbers. Let's say you started with 10,000. Well, your return is not near as good if it went from 10,000 plus the payments to 50,000. You got a 3.49% return. So you can build a template and solve lots of different problems changing the numbers. All right, let's say that you have won the lottery. Let's look at this next one. You have won the lottery and the lottery people say you won a million dollars. It's over it's over 20 years and they say really we're going to take that 1 million divided by 20 and um, we're going to if you want the cash option today then we'll take a discount of 6%. So really what happens is you didn't really win a million dollars. You won a million divided by 20. You won a stream of payments of $50,000 starting today. So if you want the cash option, that's the present value of the annuity due, if you want the cash option, it's going to be a lot less than a million. So you really didn't win a million, right? So here's what you did win. If you decide to take the cash option today instead of that stream of payments of $50,000 for 20 years, this is going to be the present value calculation. So we'll search for PV. Present value. It's going to be the rate is 6%. The number of periods is going to be 20 years. The payment, you're going to receive a $50,000 payment along the way. But what's that worth today? The future value is going to be zero. And the payment, since it's happened at the beginning of the period, we're going to put a one. Now the answer comes out to be negative. We'll put a negative in front of present value to make it positive. So what is it worth today? It is worth 607000 today. So they would say, okay, you have a choice. Do you want the stream of payments? We'll give you the first 50000 today. Or you'll get the present value of that stream of payments. You'll get 607906 today. So if you take the present value of that stream of payments, that's 607906 All right, I got two more, I believe. Let's say that we have, we're trying to get to a million dollars. Okay, we've got zero money today. We want to do it in 50 years. So you're age 20, at age 70, you want to have a million dollars. So your interest rate, you think you can get um, 8%. And so what does it take? You have no money to start right now, but you want a million dollars. So what does it take monthly payments to achieve that goal? Now, if you already have money to start with, that would be fantastic, but let's do it if you have no money right now. How long would it take? Well, how many months is this going to be? It's going to be 50 months times 12, because it's, I'm sorry, 50 years times 12, so 600 months. That's a long period of time. So what does it take monthly payments that you start this month to make that happen? So this is a PMT, a payment function, PMT. So we'll say, hey, the rate is going to be 8%, and we need to divide that by 12 months. So that is a uh, periodic rate. The number of periods is 600. The present value, we're going to make it a, we're going to make that a negative present value because we're going to make our future value to be positive, 1 million. And the payments happen at the end of the period, so we'll put a zero. So here's what it takes. If you make a payment, we'll make that negative to make the payment come out positive. If you can make an 8% return, you just need to set aside $126. And at, um, at age 70, if you're age 20, you're age 70, 50 years later, you can have one million dollars. Now if you started with just some some number like a thousand at the very beginning then you only need to put in hundred and nineteen dollars every month. Now if you could get a nine percent return then you only have to put in eighty five dollars a month. So it just depends on you can change everything on this calculation. Let's assume eight percent you've got to put in hundred twenty six dollars a month. If you start putting in more than that, you can achieve that uh, faster. Now, the last one, let's uh, calculate future value. Let's say 
that you have $5,000 on hand today and you add $300 over 40 years and let's do another 8%. Let's just say you can achieve 8% return. So how many months is it going to be? Well, 40 years times 12 months is $480. So what's our future value going to be? That's FV, FV. So we'll say the rate is 8% uh, divided by 12. That's a periodic rate. The number of periods is 480. The payment is going to be uh, $300. The present value is 5,000. They need to be the same sign, so both positive or both negative. The payments happen at the end of the period. We'll put a zero. So this account grows to 1.1 million. It shows negative. We're going to flip the sign. And so if you started with 5,000, you put in $300 a month, then over 40 years, it grows to 1.16 million. So uh, it's an impressive thing, the, the time value of money. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for watching.